There's a drink, okay? It's a type of tea that I would highly recommend you start drinking if you have depression. This drink is the second most common drink in the world behind water. Can you guess what it is? In this tea, there are many different pharmacological active compounds that create a vast spectrum of benefits. In one study, just drinking three cups of this tea per week reduced depression by 21%. And then they compared drinking one cup of this tea per day to drinking four cups of this tea per day and bumped up that number to a reduction in depression by 51%. And I'm also going to share with you a couple other things that are going to be very, very important to add to this tea to bring it to the next level. Now, what causes depression? Well, many different things. A loss of a loved one can cause depression. Stress can cause depression. A lack of sleep can cause depression. Certain nutritional deficiencies can create depressive uh, feelings. And there's a lot of people looking for alternatives to medication because medication has side effects. Well, this particular tea might be able to help you, and it is green tea. Green tea is unfermented, okay? So it's different than other teas, like black tea, for example, is fermented. Green tea is unfermented. A lot of people drink this tea trying to lose weight. There's certain research on that. Also, there's a lot of people that drink this tea because of stress, because it actually increases your ability to adapt to stress. It's considered an adaptogen. In certain areas of the brain, like the prefrontal cortex, and another part of the brain called the nucleus accumbens. What's that? Well, that's the area of the brain that is involved in addictions. They don't really fully understand it. Another part of the brain certain uh, bioactive compounds in green tea can affect is the hippocampus, which is all about cognitive function, memory, learning, things like that. Green tea also has another compound called L-theanine, or some people call it L-theanine. And this uh, amino acid helps with mood stabilization, shows that it improves depression directly, also your quality of sleep, reducing stress levels, and something called neurogenesis, which is the rebuilding of nerves, which is pretty wild. And there's other effects, anti-carcinogenic, antimicrobial, neuroprotective. There's studies that show that it may reverse age-related cognitive deficits. And the big thing that green tea has the potential to do is help you reduce cortisol. And cortisol is behind not just stress and anxiety, but also depression too. So green tea helps to regulate cortisol because it's an adaptogen. I would definitely recommend drinking at least one cup of green tea every single day. However, there's a couple other things I would highly recommend to add to this green tea. And that is this thing called exercise. Exercise is the next antidepressant. In one study with 156 adults who all had a major depressive disorder, within four months, it showed that the results were similar to Zoloft. If you continue to study three months later, only 30% of the group that exercised had depression and 52% of the drug group had depression. So if you continue to do exercise for a longer period of time, it's going to work better than certain SSRIs. Your emotions are affected by motion. High intensity interval training is going to be the best for depression and anxiety. But the key is making sure that you don't do it for a long period of time. You want short bursts of high intensity of exercise with lots of rest. And I'm talking about running, you know, 12 seconds and then resting for four minutes. Yeah, that's the pattern that you want to do. And then you cycle through that, do it again. Now, if you can walk out in the sun, if it's summer, that would be the ultimate. But vitamin D also has a huge effect, uh, whether someone is depressed or not. This is why during the winter months, people get the blues. So vitamin D is the third thing I would recommend. And I would recommend minimally 20,000 international units of vitamin D every single day. That should produce a nice effect. Okay. And the fourth thing I'm going to recommend is fasting. Now, real quick story. I had... Um, someone who reached out to me, uh, a success story of a guy who was suicidal, severe depression. And I did a whole interview with him and I'll put that link down below, but he was suicidal. So he decided to kill himself. He locked himself in his room. He was going to starve himself for three days, no water, no food, nothing. By the third day, he started feeling so good and so wonderful. It rebounded on him. He did fasting 
Fasting has interesting survival properties that help our bodies survive better. It actually got rid of his depression and his depression never came back. He went online, he started learning about it, he started following me, and now he has a job. He's no longer depressed. He's no longer angry. He is, no longer has anxiety. It's amazing, just from fasting. Now, since we touched on this hormone cortisol, there's a lot more to know about it. So I put a link down below so you can download this one-page document so you can learn all of the ways of how to lower cortisol uh, to help with stress, anxiety, and depression.